Good evening, televiewers. You welcome to today's edition of Prime. Uh, the first uh, for this week, we're going to start uh, the week asking ourselves why Africans uh, suffer the most in our war, yet they are seen to be prey more than any other uh, race on earth. We also are going to be asking ourselves uh, the question why Africans are not patriotic going by the resources we have and the rate of our development. Are we truly patriotic? If we are not uh, patriotic, why are we not uh, in so much love of our respective uh, nations? But we are going to be starting with uh, the question as to why the black race suffer the most when we pray uh, more than any other uh, race on earth. We are discussing these two topics with our panelists who are in the house. Dr. Mike and Dimancho is here with us. Good evening. I'm Michael, Doctor. Good evening, Mr. Leo. It's a pleasure to be here. Good evening, Africans. Uh, good evening to my co-panelists and to all those who are watching my media prime. Good evening to you all. We also are in the company of Mr. Tazi. Mr. Tazi is a, an expert, maritime expert. So much um, to tell us when it comes to shipping and maritime uh, transportation, but he's also a key actor in uh, development. Good evening and welcome, Mr. Tazi. Thank you, very much, Mr. Liu, and thank you for inviting me. It's our pleasure to share our opinions and make a contribution towards uh, the development of our country in Africa as a, whole, as a whole. Thank you for inviting me. We also are going to be discussing with Dr. Munang. Uh, Richard, who is coming in from Kenya. Good evening, Doctor, and welcome. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Leo, and uh, to uh, the panelists and to the viewers. It's a great pleasure to be connected today. We also are expecting uh, the arrival into our studios of Far Evis uh, Tayong, representing the Cameroon Renaissance uh, Movement. Joseph Wino is also expected to be joining us as well as uh, Elmo uh, Kwati. But uh, let me start with you. Um, Dr. Richard, when you look at uh, how religious we are as uh, blacks in Africa and in other continents, are you not also wondering, like many others, why we are at the development uh, level where we find ourselves? We pray so much for God to take us from where we are to some miraculous land. Is God not listening to our prayers? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Leo, and uh, again, the good evening to the viewers. Uh, let me put this in perspective. Uh, religion is not God. Religion is a conduit in which people perpetuate their beliefs. And one of the things that have actually been an issue is that when you look at the entire world, 75% of Africans, and I will limit my discussion to Africa because that is the continent with the highest black race, 75% of Africans are religious. But when you look at it from the way in which these aspects of prayers and religion, from my own perspective, have been manifested, they've been manifested from the talk perspective rather than from the principle perspective. What, what do I mean by this? What I mean by this is that if you are talking about action and speaking, those are two aspects that are not really aligning. And therefore, we end up with the word rather than doing the word and so as a result of that i actually believe that on fridays and saturdays and sundays when god actually looked down on africans he laughed because you're talking of a continent where we have 700,000 africans who are energy impoverished at the same time we have 365 days of sunshine that is paradoxical we have a continent that goes and prays for food then have 65 percent of uncultivated rebel land and then is losing food worth 48 billion us dollars that's paradoxical. And then we have 257 million people going to bed hungry. So when you look at the prayers, which even those who are Christians will understand from the Bible in James chapter 2, verse 17, that faith without work is dead. Then we have been showing faith without necessarily translating into work. So it is time to start now to actually ask the question, what has been the missing link? And the missing link has been the fact that we have not been living the principles of the scriptures, the principle of selflessness, the principles of hard work, the principle of diligence and self-discipline. And so we need to do three things. The first thing is to leverage the institutions that we do have. And the first is family. In our families, we need to start inculcating the attitude 
of self-discipline and hard work and selflessness. Because the truth is that we actually, as a continent, do not actually embrace the values of selflessness. We tend to be selfish. If you, these are realities, and sometimes they're uncomfortable to speak, but it's good to speak the truth, so that at least we can make meaning. The second aspect is that we need to cultivate the attitude of collectivism, not individualism. We are quite very, very individualistic, and these are not the aspects, the family granted values that we are taught. Today, we have individuals who love to succeed alone rather than succeed as a collective lot. And the third aspect is that we need to start ingraining these in our educational system to make the values of diligence, self-diligence, the values of selflessness become part and parcel of every citizen in the entire African continent. If not, people will always try to assign orders for individualistic reasons and pray. And when they get anything through GPO's means, they say that we're being blessed by God. I believe that God bless everybody. And by living, we are all blessed. And so what we need to do is to become useful and start to know that prayer alone will not be able to bring the miracles that we so much cherish. Back to you, Mr. Leo. Okay. Um, Dr. Mike Ndimachu, you are an elder in the Kali Church. You are having the you are parish council something now. What yes, is happening? Yes, yes. Are you also <laughs> worried that we pray so much? <laughs> we, <laughs> we do all night, we do everything, we everything and everything. Is it that God is not getting our prayers or we are still, God is still thinking about what to do to us? It is a good thing that you have called an, uh, a name like the Catholic Church, uh, Mr. Liu. Uh, mm. Uh, many people are getting it wrong, and I'm sure it's the Catholic Church has gotten after the, 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 the point about okay. what Christianity is all about. Mm. Uh, Christianity uh, is supposed to be something that is empowering. Mm -hmm. It is not supposed to be something that is outside destituting somebody. Yes, it's somebody is supposed to add value to you. And that's why when you, you realize, for example, the Catholic Church, wherever they are implanted, you find there's an open of schools, they are trying to bring, I mean, development to hospitals. an area, hospitals, and all of those things. They, they, they make a difference in what, actually, the Christian that worship as how they are supposed to live in the society. But let, let me put but the point is that most of us have gotten it all wrong. We, we, there's the statement that uh, uh, religion is the opium of the poor. Mm. Uh, and we have understood that uh, in Africa, people think that uh, things are easy to God through prayers. And, and it is the way the preaching was done. You know, there's that preaching about it is easier for the camel to pass through the eye of the needle mm -hmm. than for a rich man to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. I know Africans were tailored by that preaching. They were tailored by that preaching and they were made to believe that just by sitting and locking yourself in a room and praying, you are going to have what you need. Mm -hmm. And I'm surprised that up to today, they still believe in that. So you see that uh, uh, people in some, con I mean, you see uh, somebody who is suffering, immediately he gains weight, uh, worth. Mm -hmm. he, 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 he loses his religion. Mm -hmm. I mean, many people who are, when they are in power, they have money. When they, they, I mean, they forget about church. It is because people have come to understand that church praying is not about gaining what you want. Actually, working is, I mean, people are encouraged to work. And what I'm saying is that Africans want immediate solutions to their problem. And the immediate solution to their problem, they call it miracles. And they forget that God has given them the miracles in their brains and in their hands. Let me give an example. They, you go to the hospital, you know, and then they, they, I mean, you are diagnosed of malaria. And then the doctor tells you, okay, you have malaria or you have typhoid. And then he prescribes you some drugs to take. I mean, after two, three days, you are okay. Now, what happened is that that is a miracle, miracle that has been performed without you knowing. It is a miracle. And the miracle is done through what? Through ingenuity, through your brain, through your hands. And that is what Africans are supposed to know. We are sitting in this room with an air condition. And some 200 years back, there was not an air condition. A miracle has happened in the world with an air condition because people have used their brain, mm. they have used their hands. And that is the preaching that we need to give to Africans. Not that issue of what people think that they will sit somewhere, I mean, in a particular corner, corner and pray to God, and then miracles will happen to them. We need to rise up. I mean, and you know, one of these things is the way the colonial uh, the colonialism brought to us. You know, when 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 during the period of colonialism, what happened? Uh, there was this issue of the missionaries who came, and we have come to understand that these missionaries they came with, with a mission, 
And you see that the missionaries came with the Bible in their hands. I mean, preaching to us to be able to absorb the Bible and sit. I mean, the destruction of our land also have and, and touch on how to pray. Now, the issue is, I want to ask most prominent people in the world, you never know their religion. I want to quote, for example, Nelson Mandela. Nobody is talking about the church he went to. And when you hear about Nelson Mandela as a good person, as a philanthropist, as a good president, nobody talks about the church. It is because the church is not supposed to be that in a way you think you go and pray and then miracle happens to your people. We talk about people because of the work that they have done. It is only in Africa that you find that they are locking up uh, uh, things like warehouses to put churches. You see a big warehouse and then the next day you are going, you see it's the church inside. Meanwhile, they are supposed to be locking these kind of small mushroom things and putting up warehouses where we can get employment and get people to work. It has been a very, very terrible situation for Africans. So I think that we need to go back. And you see, one of the issues that has happened is because, I don't know, as I say, it's the opium of the poor. You see that in Africa, one of the things that we are made to believe is that uh, we are supposed to lose even our names. You know, these Christi Christians who came, they didn't accept that our names were anything to them because they wanted us to adopt. And what are the names that we adopted? We adopted French names. I know what French is to Africa. We adopted uh, 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 Portuguese names. And we know what they are to, to. We adopted Belgian names. And know what they are to Africa. These are the names of our colonizers. And people up to now are not able to accept that there is nothing that prayer gives. People go on praying for miracles to happen. Miracles do not happen. You can lock yourself for one week and pray, and miracles will not happen. The miracle that you have is the hands that God has given you, is the brain that God has given you, they are the feet that God has given you to be able to walk and save, your, I mean, and save humanity. So I think the issue of people, the race, people will suffering more. Because I even see that the most developed countries are those countries that have very few churches. You, look, you go to Swiss, you go to most of these countries that have very few churches, are countries that are, are, are really developed. But you come to Africa where you have churches in every 10 millimeters, you, you, you have a church that is pinned. You go to Nigeria, you go, come to Cameroon, you go to, you go to all of these places. There are places that we have wars, you know, wars that are destroying every place. And it appears that this Christianity is part of the problems of the world, or problems of Africa. It's because we have not understood the concept of Christianity. I think that we have to put, draw the, the curtain here. We, the Christianity is not bad. Christianity is actually the act of following Christ. When you are a Christian, you are a follower of Christ. But I think that in no way in the Bible were the disciples, were those who were uh, they, uh, they loading it over other Christians, because when you look at what is happening today, the pastors are those that are richer than the Christians. But in the Bible, the, the apostles were those who were actually working for the people. They were suffering for the people. But the, today, in the world of today, in the Christianity today, you find that the pastors and the priests and all those people are those who want to enrich themselves. You find that uh, you come to church, I mean, you are called to give what you call tithes. You have to give the 10% of what you earn. But if the, the funny thing is that when you are sick, you are called to pray. And we have understood that prayers doesn't add, doesn't, prayer doesn't heal. God heals people through the doctors. Okay. God heals people through the okay. hospitals. Mm. And that is what we come to understand. Um, is it also time to ask ourselves why Africa is uh, developing at a snail pace? Yet we pray every day. We pray consistently, intensively. Uh, Dr. Liu. Thank you for that question. I've, I've had a close observation on this issue of church and prayer and Africans and development. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I will say is that in Africa, most of the structures where we say we pray a lot, uh, some smart Africans have taken note of the desperation of Africans, have taken note of how underdeveloped we are, have taken note of the suffering of Africans and have seized the opportunity to open up churches as a business and not to worship God. I mean, if you do, if you go and look critically at the most popular churches in Africa, mostly of uh, mostly the new Pentecostal churches, you see, most of them, most of these guys are excessively rich. I feel that their main mission. It's not really to pray as such. 
That's the first observation I have. It's a it's some sort of a business that they have opened and they use that to exploit because people are desperate. There's a saying that when when people are desperate and they convince the people to feel that by by coming to pray, they will get their problems solved. Prayers go along. Even in the Bible, it is said that you have to go out and fend for yourself. You cannot sit and pray and you don't work. You think that is going to bring a miracle. That prayers alone will be. It will, but you have to work. The point is you have to work. This is where there's a disconnection. You pray and work. Secondly, watch out where you worship. Because my opinion is that a lot of these structures are money-making structures, and they give the impression to the way that they are praying. But the money, the money stays in Africa. The question is, why are we not developing at the pace of others? Okay, if you come to that, uh, we have a problem in Africa. One, Africans are very selfish. Okay. Africans are very selfish, and it, this cut across the board. From our leaders to the leaders of the church, we are very selfish. And uh, if, you, if you want to ask that question, I will take it a bit out of the church. Okay. Look at the African leaders. Look at Africa is so endowed with a lot of natural resources. Why is it that Africans are not, I mean, this is to the, to, the, to the other topic. Why is it Africans with all this wealth we cannot develop? It's because we are selfish. And the Westerners have tapped into that aspect of selfish Africans. And they have picked it. And they know that doctor seated opposite me here. That's why each time doctor shows up a sense of patriotism, they will take him out. Mm -hmm. Because they have noticed that we are selfish. They go to uh, my, my brother seated there. When he's working and he's doing everything according to what they want, he can rule his country for life at the detriment of everybody in his country. So if you want to connect this to development, development is mostly because we are selfish and our colonizers have noticed it and they, they, they make us very, they, they, they bring very handsome offers to us that we empower. Find, uh, it is irresistible for us in power to turn them down. And we are taking these options at the detriment of our, our, of our common man, of the citizens of the country. So that, that is where I find the connection. We are not developing because, I mean, if you look at it, every African leader that has proven to, to care about his com the common people in this country, bringing, structures from, uh, bringing into place some structures that can bring development, water, electricity, accommodation, and but they are often taken out by the West because they don't want us. Of course, I've listened to big millionaires in the West sit in the meeting and say that if Africa develops, they will not develop. The minerals in Africa, they need it mm -hmm. to develop their country. So okay. they, they are monitoring us where we are. They want to keep us where we are. And we are helping them because we are selfish. Okay, we are selfish. Yes, uh, yes. Good evening, Mr. Liu. And the able panelists, I'm enjoying your program. It's very educative. Lauren is writing from uh, Yaoundé. Good evening to you, uh, Lauren. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. Uh, more grace and please uh, thank Mr. Michael for me. He's saying what exactly what is killing us in Cameroon and Africa. It's Alex also writing from uh, young the, uh, the kangaroo man. You are around. Good evening and welcome. Um, have we prayed enough? And uh, mm -hmm. what now we need to do is to pray to see the men of God take over the realms of power. Maybe uh, <laughs> things will turn around. Well, I, I think that I've been able to listen to the other panelists uh, with their presentations, which are quite very apt. And uh, one of the things that are striking to me before looking at what the prayer aspect is doing, yet we are still suffering, is for the fact that, um, like one of our brother panelists said, we are selfish. Oh, well, yeah, they say we are selfish. Uh, it's an aspect I don't agree with because... In the uh, sociological components of the Africans before the advent of the colonization, we had what they call a communal spirit. I'm sure those who come from the grass field, those who come from the Bakosi land understand what I'm talking about. That there was that convivial spirit whereby people had to share with relatives. Uh, sometimes on uh, particular traditional festivals, you cook yam and go and give to your uncle somewhere in another area. You would take for distances. That is what they call a communal spirit. It was, selfishness was not even there. The aspect of selfishness came in when the Europeans brought in their sense of education. So by nature, I don't think Africans are selfish compared to the white uh, phenomenon whereby they have in their own place that you grow, they, they don't have what they call extended families. So if in our, in our African historical background, we have extended families, it means by nature we are not selfish. That one, I have to be honest with that, based on historical facts. And so, uh, probably to really say we are selfish, no. What has made us to be the way we are, it is the system. First, the colonial system, and then secondly, the, uh, the leaders that were given to us. Now, these leaders decide that 
in line with their colonial policies attached to, they have decided that if Africans become enlightened, first, through education, it means that this aspect of churches and the aspects of, uh, I'll, I'll call that, uh, that, that is caging us mental, in a mental way, that's mental slavery, will disappear. And that's why you discover that for those who have gone through the white man's education, those who went through the aspects of the advent of um, um, religious and the spread into African continent, saw that, well, we have to embrace Christ, we have to forgive one another, uh, leaders are chosen by God, blah, 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 blah. They have the kind of uh, uh, the, the, uh, quotations they give us, which means that we are forced to accept whatever leaders do to us, knowing that leaders are chosen by God. Now, this is where the wrong philo philosophy came in. Now, with the aspect of the wrong leaders that were given to us, the leaders that work for the interests of the colonial powers, such that at each time the leaders are wrong, we cannot oppose because we think that we will be hurting God. Now, look at it critically. Get into the Christian folk. Let's talk about the Pentecostal, for example. Realize that they don't take part in politics. Over 80% of real Pentecostals are not involved into politics. Which means that to them, let the people do the way they want to do. And look at this kind of philosophy. Why they do so, any idea, any governmental principles that is decided has a role to play on them. Whether they like it or not, because they have decided to be aloof and say, well, that one is for you to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. These are some of the factors that go a long way to keep us into mental slavery such that they make us to understand that to come out of the misery because tr the truth is that the leaders will not want you to be employed because when you are employed secondly when you are given a refined form of education you become so intelligent and you'll be a threat to the leaders so they have to put the archaic form of education that was brought by the west they do some light adjustments and still keep a grip such that mentally you don't develop this is where the mental slavery comes in and then because of the pushed nature of poverty which they have given unto us now, we fight to survive, Mr. Liu. Now, if I have a cake, uh, piece of bread here, I have my children, sometimes I wonder, first, my children should first of all benefit so they don't die of starvation, whereas your own children are supposed to benefit from that piece of cake as well. So that is where now you see the issue of self centeredness comes in because of the kangaroo system they have carefully put in place. Now, I listened to a doctor who spoke a little while ago, uh, Dr. Dimancho, about, you know, um, you know, the aspect of the, 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 the church and all the like, except the Roman Catholic Church. Of course, you ask the question, I think, whether it's a, uh, is it the deacon or whosoever, but I think from the Catholic Church. But I saw that this aspect, uh, like, just like my other panelists talked about, you know, like in the Pentecostal, no. It is all the churches. They should hear me very well. I'm not talking about my mouth. All the churches have decided to transfer mental slavery onto the people. I say all. Dr. Dimancho was talking about, you see, for example, How the open... Say, the, the, I am coming. The, I talk with facts the on the Spirit, ground. The Holy Spirit liberates. It gives us freedom. Let me come. Yes, opens up to... It us opens to, up in a positive manner. Why is the Holy Spirit opening up in the West and not opening up in Africa? Because in the West, if you are attending church in Switzerland, you have what they call economic problem. That is, the church does not engage you. That is why you will not see in Switzerland they go to church Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. So it doesn't move like that. Because they have been oriented that... The, when you want to make earn a living, God already knows all your worries. It's not by sleeping in church, foregoing economic activities, that your problems will be solved. In that case, they come out of the shelves and begin to learn technology. But fasting, now, fasting is part of uh, empowering us now. No, fasting is accepted, Mr. Liu. Hmm. It's very well accepted. But the question now is, what is our level of religious, religiosity, in quotes, hmm. compared to that of the West? We exaggerate. Now, if you look at what doctor said a, a while ago, that the Catholic Church is doing because, you know, the open churches, the open schools and hospitals. No. All those churches are mafia churches. I am talking about, no, what I'm about. Why did they open this, Mr. Leo? I speak with facts. I said earlier that if churches are not playing business, as one of our panelists said, which is true, and churches are not enslaving us, you can't tell me that I'm a member of a church. They want to open hospitals. They announce in a church, men contribute this, women contribute this, children this, we contribute. When it comes down to using the service of that church, they no longer concern whether I contributed or not. And worse at times, worst, Mr. Liu, the prices of those churches, I mean, the, the costs are so exorbitant Wait, you, that going you're through... You're to help mankind. No, Mr. Mankind Liu, service. this is the issue here. Because the, the hospital serves everybody. In no, the it serves, no, Mr. Mr. Liu, it serves everybody. What I'm saying is this. When you contribute in the growth of a church... Hmm. The church, to show an example, must be able to have some moderate aspect towards don't those think, don't who put in place my, my that kind of structure. To you is, now, was, should, should Christians not pray their men of God to take up um, positions, leadership positions? Maybe 
as religious personalities, they would... They would uh, no, they could pray as you would, say. Yeah, they would run Africa differently. Mr. Leo, they could pray as you say, but let me tell you something. If you put these men of God to run the African continent, they will be worst. I am talking, yeah. I will tell you, Bruce, Mr. Liu. They are spirit fear. Don't bother about the spirit, Mr. Liu. They are spirit fear. This is it. They are God fearing. Let me tell you the aspect. You and I know what transpires with the elections in China, even at the level of elders and deacons. He knows. Unless you don't want to tell us here. In all the almost all the churches, they know what transpired. That when campaign periods come for deacons, let's not talk as if we have angels on earth here. They are human beings. I know the mafia that transpires when you want to put in place an elder. Church members and whatever the case might be, committee members of the church is always a whole lot of. Mister, look, these are facts we are talking about in Africa. If we cannot come on air and call a spade a spade, it means that even we too are playing the devil's advocate, <laughs> and that is why if you go to aspects of who is the uh, the head of a particular church, the mafia is always enormous. And how does it go about? Look at it, Mister Leo, that in some churches, before you visit particular areas, you calculate the, the financial benefit. How do you explain that? We are out for evangelization. But some areas have more attention from church authorities than others. It defeats the purpose. Jesus was not working like that. Jesus said, I came for the, the I, I did not come for the righteous. Mm. Now, what does it mean? Jesus moved from Capernaum, Galilee, and to the enclave areas. But I tell you, if you look at the church government, for example, wherever you oppose them, they relegate to the background and send you to an area which they consider as punishment. Okay. Now, these things are visible with us. Okay. So at the end of the mental slavery, that is why the prayers will not even first be answered by God. Mr. Leo, if they tell you that most of these prayers will answered by God, it's a lie. That's why we have paid peace today, tomorrow, the day after. Because God knows that these things, are, first of all, sometimes are motivated with financial instincts and other political, satanic manipulations that come into but it. But we need the f finances to, to grow. We will need finances to grow, Mr. Leo. But we will not need the finances at the level at which we put finances first and the gospel second. Okay. It is an error. Please, I'm in Boya, wish, wishing to follow up on your program, but I have no volume from your channel. Try seeing what can be done. Okay. Um, no. Um, Assistant. Hello, good evening. Mr. Liu, I'm enjoying your program, but please, I want to ask a question, and it goes to doctor. Doctor said miracle is the hands and brains God has given us. Please ask him to help me with the definition of miracle in the context of the Bible b before saying that thanks. Gaius is writing from Boya. Mm. Okay, you want an immediate answer? Yes, if, if possible. The, the, uh, uh, miracle in the context of the Bible. Mm. Well, uh, God performed miracles in many ways. Look at the marriage feast in, in Cana, where Jesus changed water into wine. That is a miracle in the Bible. And of course, and it worked. Jesus did that and it worked. But when, when I talk about today, uh, you should not be expecting somebody to sit and tell you that a miracle is working here, go and get a miracle. Is that God has given us that power to perform the miracles ourselves. We should not wait for those leaders to perform the miracles. It means that each and every one of us is a, has a temple of miracles. We should be creative. And we should be creative. And that temple of miracle is creativity. Mm. It's renovation. It is working hard. It is, I mean, working for the society. And just that, as I gave an example, in the yesterday years, you wanted to travel and maybe go to Europe. I mean, it was not possible. You want to travel from Duarte to Bermuda. It was not possible. But with the advent of uh, vehicles, now you can do it. That is a miracle. And that's a miracle in day-to-day -day life. If God has made you a good uh, communicator, a journalist, you have to be able to do it miraculously. And Martin Luther King said, if you are a street sweeper, sweep it in such a way that nobody sees any fault with it. That is a miracle. If you are somebody who God has given you technological powers and knowledge, do is fabricate things in such a way people come and marvel. And you know that when they are marveling, they are saying in their heart that this is a miracle. Because somebody who doesn't know that thing knows that it is an, some sort of enigma. He knows that it's a very difficult thing. And anything that is difficult for somebody else to do is a miracle. So to that, our caller, I would like also, and let me just interject here and say that uh, Mr. Safar talked about a series of issues, and one of the things he talked about election of deacons. I don't even know about that. He talked about mafia. I don't want to get about in a Catholic church who don't have deacons. Anyway, I gave an example of a Catholic church. Catholic church do not have deacons that will have, go for election. They have priests uh, that are ordained, they have catechists, and whatsoever. So I was saying that the things that the Catholic Church does, I'm not 100% saying that the Catholic Church is the, the best church whatsoever. I'm just giving my own example as a Christian of that church. And let me tell you, I will give a startling uh, statement here. After God is money. After God is money. But not God before money. 
Well, that is true. Nobody yeah. puts yeah, God. Because for somebody to come and give money, you need to have a church. And you know the reason for the church? The reason for the church is that you have to pray to God. You are coming there not because of money. You are coming first to pray to God before maybe you are manipulated the way you are saying. <laughs> and the second thing, let me tell you, yes. The second thing is the building of, uh, uh, you are talking about the building of hospital where people go to pay. It is normal. See, if we want to render services to people, the services should be paid. Because Africans have misused free services. If you want to rent a good services in Africa, they should be paid for. Let me tell you, and an African, when you give a free thing, when something is free, they do not value it. Because those things, those who are working, they need to be catered for. If you do not cater for those people who are working there and take care of them well, they will not render the good services that they want. So they need to pay for those services. The third thing you talk about, uh, church leaders in politics, and you say, if they even put church leaders in politics, it would be worse. Uh, how can you say this, uh, Mr. Farr? I can repeat I, it over I, I think over. that, I think that... Um, so they should just stay I, where they are. I, I, if my memory says you well, yeah. you will serve as one as a communication uh, yeah. officer of a church man I, wanted I to be a political campaign. So yeah. you were fooling yourself and you were fooling Cameroonians. So next time you, you, you apologize to them, that you fool them. So what I'm saying is that we have had people who have distinguished themselves. Look at the people like Desmond Tutu, who was a churchman. Of course, if we are talking about the salvation, that Afri South African were savaged from the apartheid regime, we are talking about people like Desmond Tutu, who is a monument. And I think that if you have to make a, that kind of a general statement like this, and we Do think about what... Well, not as a leader. He played a role no, in the no, church he, and not he, a political role. No, no, no. He played. Except well, well, no, he, he played. He played, he played, he played a role, role in politics. Yeah. You don't know. Let me tell you. Yeah. He played. There was no Nelson Mandela without Desmond Tutu, mm -hmm. and Desmond Tutu played that. Although he played as a catalyst. Because he didn't well, want to be actually part, part in it. But, I want to talk about forward. No, well, we have listened to testimonies. Can't you not even accept him to move to that road that you talk about? Why? Why would okay. they? Even a person yeah, like... No, let, no, no, let me tell you. Even a person like uh, Christian Kanato, who didn't actively take part in politics, what he, he was has not written, to be a leader. Well, Mr. Far, he did what he, he did. He was correcting what something. He, what he actually did in his writing and his because speeches... leadership here. Change. Not Kanato, as we are talking no, about. No, well, what are you talking about leadership? I mean, the church has that okay. salvation okay. mission okay. to be okay. able to okay. instruct people uh, to, uh, to do politics. Okay. Good evening, uh, my media prime, Mr. Liu. Firstly, Muslims pray more than we do. But the difference is they work more than we do. Yeah. And reason why uh, the northern African countries and Middle East are far better. Yeah. But the root cause of our underdevelopment is linked to our history of slavery and colonization. And more importantly, the incredible riches of the continent. For this reason... Every other continent has made Africa their farm. God bless the work of our hands and brains and not the prayers of our mouth. Good evening to you, Stephen Mwambu, writing from Boya, Southwest Regional Capital. Good evening, Mr. Liu and panelists. I'm actually enjoying the program. Please, doctors should know that the definition of miracle. A miracle is something that can't be scientifically proven. You shouldn't mix up things. Uh, Mrs. Fossa Tekla, writing from uh, Yaoundé. I uh, don't know how we can aptly... Um, explain the aeroplane uh, flying. The, 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 That's the, the explanation. Yeah, I know, I know. The, the, the I, I science know, man I, explains how it goes. I, I, I know. Yeah, this explanation. Good, good evening uh, to you, Mr. And Liu. Uh, I'm always so happy watching the program. In my opinion, the black race is suffering because of greediness. We want to amass wealth for ourselves and for our children. Africa, stop blaming the West and grow. My name is Max, writing from Simbok in Yaoundé. Um... What Mr. Far Elvis is saying is true. See if the church school are very expensive. That other school, which is uh, you meant uh, done, other schools which is being created by the money of the poor woman, working farm, but cannot send their children to that same school. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Uh, good evening to you too. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Uh, the presence of God is not the absence of troubles. Prayers is not answered by man, but by God, and God answers prayers that are in line with His will where the will of God is absent, the prayer is meaningless. And I disagree uh, with doctor that God heals, but through doctors, God, he God himself is a healer. So my advice is that we should pray according to God's will and not according to our will. Emil Wango is writing from uh, Yaoundé. Good evening to you, Emil. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Africans have egocentric mindsets. It starts from the type of leadership structure which is influenced by the West. They brought Christianity in Africa to exploit our natural resources. Mr. Francis is writing from uh, Limbe. Good evening, Mr. Leo. The African man was one, but the white man uh, came with a lot of bad ideas for the Africans. They gave us a book they wrote uh, called Bible so that we are reading the 
while we are reading the book, uh, Beautiful Stories, they collect our resources to develop their own. Mr. Liu, some of this uh, is scam. Nelson Gomez writing from Sang Miliman. Uh, Dr. Richard, now, I don't know, you are an expert on issues of development. Have you come across theories that explain the relationship uh, between uh, Christianity, the multiplicity of churches in Africa, and uh, development? Yeah, thanks again, uh, Mr. Leo, and uh, I've listened very carefully uh, to the panelists. And, and please let me put this in perspective. Okay. And I will start off from the dimension of what we understand in the context of development and the people of Africa vis-a-vis -vis other parts of the world. I'll, I'll, I'll bring up this part in Canaan, uh, where Jesus turned water into wine. If you notice, there is one particular aspect that we are not mentioning here. Jesus asked, he said, fill the jar. Who did he say fill the jar? He asked the people to do it. That means they applied effort. The miracles do not just happen by default. They happen whereby somebody had to apply effort to do something before it finally got turned to wine. That means we've been missing this link that if we do not apply effort, we do not use our talents and our skills and continuously believe that something will just happen to us just because we have sat and we think that we are so special that it will happen. That doesn't work anywhere in the world. And therefore, to answer your question, in the 1960s, South Korea was actually at par with the African countries when they were fighting for independent uh, dispensation in the continent at the time. And in 1962, South Korea became so broke and experienced a hunger episode that African countries were actually sending them food. And an African country, for diplomatic reasons, I will not mention the name, actually gave South Korea a loan of 10,000 US dollars, which was later repaid. South Korea is not a religious country. What did they do different that Africa is not doing different? They focus in enhancing the skills of their citizens and applying values of discipline, values of selflessness to, to capitalize on what they had in abundance. And that time was textile, and they started exporting uh, textile out of the country and adding value to what was there. When you come to the African continent today, I think the issue is narrative. I think this is really an issue that we need to address without any fear of contradiction. The narrative is that if you fold your arms and pray alone, things will happen. And because of that, yes, miracles do happen, but miracles happen when you apply effort. And if you are lucky and they happen when you have not applied effort, it doesn't mean that they, need, they will continue to be happening that way. And there is an aspect that is hardly discussed in the continent. And my understanding of the continent and from the development perspective is that anything that fits to the miseries and good fortunes of the continent is easily embraced, that we will have rain. Then we don't prepare with the seeds to plant. And then the rains we don't plant, then we expect that we're going to have a harvest. It doesn't happen anywhere in the world. Know that we will go to school. And when we finish school with a certificate, unless we apply our skills to, to turn our talent to skills and then apply the skills to get a result, we will automatically get our problem solved. That's a fallacy, and that's a false narrative. So the difference between other continents and Africa is that they focus in developing the skill sets of their citizens and nurture them with the attitude of selflessness, not selfishness, the attitude of collectivism, not individualism. But for us, we want to focus on what we can get without necessarily doing anything and then when we get it, we call it miracles, When, despite the fact that even the processes are dubious. So the point is that unless we go back to the basic principles of nurturing self-diligence, of nurturing selflessness in our young people, and even those who are still young at heart, we might end up having a leadership point, we might end up having bad governance. And because one other, the panelist said this, when you perpetuate that ability, that if you pray alone, you are going to have what you don't have. People then believe in it and continuously get impoverished. Then now, uh, their misery and frustration increases and anything that will sink into that, they will believe in it more. So it takes the gods for each and every one of us to be able to start debunking these false narratives and false beliefs that if you do not apply effort, you can be able to get miracles. 
effort is what we need, not only lip service. Thank you. Okay. Effort is what we need and not lip uh, service, um, Mr. Tazi. Um, now, does God hate us? Are we less uh, privileged as Africans compared mm. with others? No. I think we are, are we less careful, less intelligent? Are we um, unlucky? Mm -mm. I would say no. I would say God is a fair God. We are not less careful, we are not even less intelligent. Mm -hmm. But we have a wrong system of education. Okay. Uh, there's a problem there with wrong system of education. Our system of education that we inherited is wrong. And uh, it was carefully designed for us. You want to ask yourself, why is it that for the past 50, 60 years, no African can manufacture anything, not a plane, not a car, nothing. But we are using syllabuses that came from the West. And people in the West are doing these things. They gave us these syllabuses. We are using them. Why are they, why are they, why are they using them? We cannot use it. Africans are not dull. Africans are not neither hated by God. And uh, I, I, got, I, I got a small testimony to give here that I had this friend who was teaching mathematics in London, in the university in London. So they had to push out a group of books from the Department of Mathematics, library books. And he solicited to send them to Africa as a gift. His immediate boss accepted. These are books that were used in his faculty. Then he went and made arrangements and brought a container. When the books were about to be loaded, they were stopped. He was stopped and the books were burnt. This is how careful they are not to leave out, not to give out the syllabuses that are used in their schools to Africa. Because those are, these are the syllabuses that have, that have projected them to, to science, to produce this camera, to produce the pen you are using, to produce everything. So what I'm saying is that we have the wrong system of education. Also, education does not empower us, does not correlate praying with working, like Dr. from Kenya just said. That's, that's, that's one of the issues I wish to raise. The second one is that the leadership. The leadership in Africa is that which has been carefully kept there. By, uh, from somebody from Simbok said we should develop and not blame our, our colonial masters. I said no, because they are behind our situation and they're enjoying our situation. And the leaders they have kept there are there to achieve their agendas. That's why, Mr. Liu, if you are very innovative now, if you are an innovation, a minister sitting there will likely not give you the an innovation that's going to reduce poverty and employ a lot of young Cameroonians and help Cameroon move forward. You, you, you're a minister that has to, you are, you are in, in, a, in an organogram. There's somebody has to approve for you to do something. That minister may key that dream in the cupboard and it will never come out. And so that, that the, 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 the leadership here plays a very major role. Yeah, but, and, but, 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 but then, uh, how do we relate this to religion? These ministers are Christians in churches. All of us are Christians. You relate, it, you relate it in the fact that what we say and learn in the church is not what we practice. I mean, a lot of us, and that is where there's a disconnection. That is where the problem, that is actually the crux of the matter. Because you say we pray a lot, but we are not developing. We pray a lot, we are not developing because all we, are, the we are praying makers, and doing the wrong things. All the decision makers, every Sunday they are in church. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they are doing the wrong things after going to church. They, 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 step out, they are doing the wrong thing. That they are is, stealing that state. Is, that is why we are, they are we, stealing state money. Mm -hmm. they, are, they, are, they are not giving jobs to those who merit it. They are giving every job to people from their villages. I mean, this is not, Cameroon was not meant for some particular people. Or not Cameroon, African. How can not some particular people? Let somebody get something because the person merits it. Because the person deserves it. So if, you, if I go to church as a leader and I leave the, the church and I, there's an opportunity for this, for this phone to pick up and I, I, I block it because it's not from my village or from my friend. I mean, what, how do you relate that to church? We are blaming uh, church. You know like what he's saying? Yes. Uh, let me just cue in because he's saying something very correct there. Mm -hmm. You see, the reason why I used to take it hard on the church, uh, most of the pastors have made me behind. I said, no. The truth needs to be told. Now, Come to think of it, Mr. Lee, when I say they cannot be leaders, I hear Mr. Devaja talk about I should go, I should come, I should come, this and that, not so. Right. All right. I performed my job as a communication officer. It was a job as an expert assigned for that job. It was a payable job, just like your service could be hired anywhere. But then, what is the, the, the crux of the matter, Mr. Liu? If you see me taking on the church very hard, it's because if we were supposed to experience development in real terms, as per the crux of the matter and the Bible, the church should have been the champion of it. Now, we are talking about all the ministers and directors attend those churches. But now, the question now is not even they themselves doing bad things because they might be doing it out of ignorance. But the question is, what are the leaders of the church doing with them? That's why I said, if you take the leaders of the church now, 
and put them to lead the nation, it will be catastrophic. Why? Because they know these leaders in particular. They know these, these directors and this Mr. Mr. Leo. But they connive with them. They condole. Why? Because this Mr. used to give me an envelope. He used to buy me a car. And go to most of these churches. The people have particular seats to sit. It doesn't function like that in the kingdom of God, Mr. Leo. As a minister, you are like a normal Christian. That's why the last two weeks I went to a church somewhere and they were telling me, no, Mr. Joe, you have come in. I said, no, I am a Christian like any other person. Maybe me sit behind where I want to sit. But at least it, it, it muffled the ushers. But I felt that it's a sign of humility that it must not be, what if you don't know me? Must I go and sit where the pastor is sitting? So you see that they condone because if churches had taken the their, 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 their bull by the horn, all these directors, you break them. Mr. Man, this you are doing is not correct. I saw you on TV the other day. It was wrong. You rebuke him with the spirit of God. I am sure that Mr. Lewis has been talking of a, of, of, of a refined society. Secondly, even the men of God, because most of them are involved in a scam in the name of gospel and implantation of businesses, which works for their favor and in their names and in their organizations, at the long run, the economic empowerment is completely absent. Very few churches have gone through many churches. You know, I work more with pastors. Very, you can count churches that have economic empowerment. Very few. Because most of them, they don't even know when you empower the Christians economically, the tithes at the long run comes back to divide the church by far. But look at it that you have it that the old brother who comes there, you will come and tell him how you have a vision on this. The first person who sold this seat, uh, anger God by sowing a seat. Those are scamming messages they give. And people fall in for. We have a church, even a case uh, in Nigeria now, in the Kitty State. The pastor is still under custody now. Who even told Paul to bring uh, what is 38,000 naira and all the like and come and stay in the church premises and then they will soon have visa to go to heaven. You could imagine. These are things factual. So, because the that, men of God, the Christians should do one. they should bring 38,000 naira each for a start and then they will come and come in the church and later on they will have a visa to go. It's a kitty state. They are watching us. I'm talking like this. Now, the guy is under custody and he confessed that that's what he did. But then, someone has sold their properties and all the like to come and stay in the church, believing that they will go to heaven. We have seen others who eat grass on the shoulder of the pastor. We have seen others who uh, drink dirty water or whatever from the pastor. So you can imagine that the philosophy. God, God works in, so, in strange ways. Mr. Leo, this strange way that we are talking is not the way God works. So this one is a demonic way. So we, if we don't rebuke this man of God to sit up, because this program is not to castigate them. I think that in my church, if I have a director, I have a minister, and I know his deeds, and he's on outing every day, lying that everything is under control. What stops a pastor to call that man that please for the sake of God? Even tell him that you have a vision that shows that if it lies again, you will die. If I told, if I told you have the real vision too. So if we had these things, they would have been scared. But now, these people are the ones who are furnishing these churches. They are in church committees. They will give big in church organizations. They, when they come for fundraising, they will do that. So the men of God are tight. So they cannot rebuild them. That is why you see us moving where we are. And I say, if you take men of God in this kind of category, that they should lead the church. They will be worse than the unbelievers. Good evening, uh, panel. Uh, good program. The church is not physical but spiritual. It's a spirit of God and a man. Uh, the spirit of hard work, wisdom, and obedience. Pastor Johnson, writing from Batoke. Good evening, Mr. Liu. A uh, great program you are running. It seems most of us Africans don't know about the letter Lord Lugard wrote to the colonialists uh, who came to Africa for colonization. He told them that, I quote, do not go to Africa thinking that they don't yes. know God. They mm -hmm. do, and their God is more present than us, but teach them to forget and abandon their God to accept us. End of quote. Now in Africa, we destroy factories that provide employment and construct churches that only preach miracles why won't we suffer more even with more prayers Thank eugene you. is writing from uh, duwala greetings mr liu if we claim that god is sovereign that he has planned for each of us how then do we spend countless hours in churches fasting praying and making demands for him to change his plans for our lives he already knows our destiny as told by the preachers how can preachers be teaching people to pray and seek help from the spirit world for things that require practical applications in the physical world? Mm -hmm. Prayers cannot build roads, good drinking water, good schools, internet, cars, aircrafts, and all the basic things that all responsible governments are already providing to their citizens. Religious dogma is a disaster. Uh, Dr. Wesley Angoni is writing from the U. S A. Good evening, Mr. Leo. This is blessed from Yaoundé. Actually, I'm enjoying the program, but something we should know is from the Bible that's in Hosea chapter 4, 6, which says, My people perish because they lack knowledge. 
and have rejected the law of God, which is the Bible. That's to say, if we want to develop a country and Africa, we need to focus more on the Bible. It's saying about developing a country than basing on what pastors are saying, because they are men of God and not God of men. Okay? Uh, good. Even Mr. Liu, I, the panelists are so contradictory. If we say our colonial masters are behind our situation, I wonder where a colonial master forced a, our ministers or governments from recognizing a young man who builds an aircraft, etc., simply because it's not uh, their blood. Max is writing from Simbok. Um, the worst thing that ever happened to Africa is Christianity. This is something that has got nothing to do with Africa and has spirituality. We need to go back to our roots. Can we imagine that a people told that they will make it to heaven only when they die? Uh, the white man is actually transforming their communities into heaven on earth. A religion, okay. Leonard is writing from uh, Bonaberry. Oops, I see the topic is so, so, so touching. The messages, it's even difficult to read uh, the messages. <laughs> now, um, a doctor in church, we, we, are, we are taught love. That is that we should share. We are taught tolerance. We are we taught um, all the good things. That is what we are, we are taught in church now. Yes, that's true. We are taught to be nice persons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. We go to church from our basic levels, primary school, secondary schools, university, and uh, we come out to start working and do not reflect what we are taught in church. How do we explain this? Well, it is simple because a human being is so complex and the way that we have received, we re even received Christianity, uh, it is, we are beginning to understand that this was something that was forced on us because <laughs> we, begin, we receive it in our heads and not in our hearts. And that is why you find we do not actually leave the biblical uh, uh, prescription as we are supposed to leave because we, it, as if it was forced on us. Now, you see, there is uh, a lot of... Uh, uh, misconception about everything. You know, I started by saying that religion is the opium of the poor. And, and of course, it is a fact. Because uh, how do we explain that most of the people who you find actually singing and dancing and whatsoever, most of them are even the poor. Even the ministers who go to church, let me tell you, they don't go for the worship of, the, of, 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 of God. They go for the show of, of the thing. A minister is going because he wants to be able to stand and maybe uh, give a sum of money for the construction of this and you never know most of these things are into so many things and some of the conditions that they have to give money to the churches that is a fact so you shouldn't look at even those ministers who go to church and say they go to church and they don't change things in the society they are condemned not to do that so i think uh we have we have had our own tradition which of course is fast disappearing because we have reduced, uh, or even our own people, our parents have reduced, uh, refused, or they didn't, either they didn't hand the tradition down to us, or we refused receiving the tradition. Let me, let me take for example, some of these uh, uh, native doctors or whatsoever, who we had in our African society, we didn't have hospitals, but they were healing. Now, you find that they have suddenly disappeared. What has happened? It is because either they have gone away with these talents that they had, or we have refused this in the light of fetish tradition. And you see, and even all of us talking here, we are actually guilty of all this because uh, we have realized that all of us see what is white to be good. Every day, if you don't do a white wedding, you are not a person. You have to do a white wedding. No, so some of us, not all of us. Sir. I mean, I, I, of most course. Uh, I, well, you say most people, not all of us. Of, I'm, I'm not among No, no, you are among because if I no, look no. at you, if I look at you, no, no. you, you what, and, and exactly that is what this Christianity is all about. No, no. That we sing and sing in church, we sing love, we sing forgiveness, but back the practice that we have doesn't reflect what we say. Because if I look at the Kangaroo man, I actually see him as a Western man, apart from the cap that he has on. You are a Western uh, well, that's what you think. Uh, well, in your mind, right? Yeah, yeah, you definition your definition is relative. You yeah, cannot force me to be worse in the way you think. That, that, that's, that's right. You are worse in your mind. Yeah. 
Because when I look at your wasting, my mind, you don't so, know what so, I do. So what I'm saying is that uh, <laughs> don't force me to be wasting. No, I'm not forcing you. I'm not forcing you. What I'm saying that most that keeps me watching that if you have never known. Most maybe well, that is not watching you will know exactly know that you are what they're saying is different. That's that's right. But show us. What, I'll tell you what you I think must about. Show you where I am. Of in my I show it. So it means that my example is glaring yeah. because I am pointing to the yeah. example, right? I mean, I mean, it, I mean, it is touchable. Yeah, I was saying so, correctly that don't say everybody. You cannot say everybody in that case. No, I say everybody because you have that physical no, future. So. That is right. Okay, we agree on that. Yeah. So I am saying that I'm saying that we have all. I mean, you you, you realize that we most Africans, and we we talked about development whatsoever. An African will want to have the knowledge alone. We want to have the secret to that thing alone. He doesn't want to share it, and it is not our culture. This culture came because of what we call that capitalist system that we have, that you want to own things alone. In our African society, we didn't have fences around our, our, our houses. But immediately, the white man came with that issue of you owning your own economy, you and the immediate family, we started having this. So there's that issue of selfishness. We have begun to be too selfish, more than actually, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the whites who actually brought what we call the Christianity to us. So we should have ourselves to blame. I said here, and I'm not supporting any church of any other. If I gave an example of a particular church, it's because of what I see they do. In research, you talk about what you see. You don't talk about imagination. You don't keep and inculcate the value and keep it in your head. And you think that the person who sees you will think that that's the value that you have. I look at you and I say, this is what I'm seeing. If you, whatever you argue, I'm arguing with facts. So I'm saying that this Christian, like, like the Catholic Church, I, I was talking about them actually constructing schools. Whatever they do, or whatever they matric the Christian or the tax hide on Christian, is not my problem. What I'm talking about, the development aspect of the church, that the church is supposed to develop. Because the church develops, we will not be having, I mean, poor people in the society, we will not be lacking hospitals in our society, we will not lack schools in our society, and the churches are there, and we only have churches being implanted and implanted and getting into the hinterlands. The churches are right in the remotest place in the villages. You have churches, but when you go there, schools are supposed to follow churches. Hospitals are supposed to follow churches. That is what we are saying, and that we were saying that churches have become more selfish, and the church leaders have become so selfish because you have a church, and one person is controlling the whole of that church. You have the one church, the overseer, the one ch person with the treasurer. You have the one church, the financial sector of that particular church. Well, how do we make reference of those kind of churches? No, um, I don't, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure that one person can be the treasurer, financial sector <laughs> of a church. No, 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 no. They have those churches in the pocket. We have, we have leaders in the church. Yeah, we have leaders. Some of them are deacons. Yeah. You, were one, you once were one of the deacons, eh? One of them. Deacons in one of these. No, churches. I've never been one of the deacons. I've okay, been the communication officer in a presidential campaign team. That's what they uh, say. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, uh, Doctor uh, Richard, we're talking about uh, the church and uh, development in Africa. Um, are we also where we are because we are so divided? The church, the church, Christ preached a love and, uh, 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 and actually advocated for a uh, unity amongst our people. But Africa is plagued with uh, so many uh, crises, um, which translates to the fact that we are very, very uh, not open to the principle of forgiveness, uh, tolerance, and uh, peaceful uh, means of solving our problems. We rather uh, prefer going the violent way. Yet we are very Christian, uh, yeah. Mr. Liu. Mm. I think I think this is a very important point, and I would like to really emphasize on this. If you look at the entire scriptures, and I think different religious affiliations that people are affiliated to, it centers on one word: love. And love is not supposed to be only through spoken words; it's supposed to be demonstrated through our actions. And if you look at the entire African continent, we are very good at talking. I mean, uh, if we were to uh, be given a Nobel Peace Prize uh, or, or, or a, a prize, we will win that. We pay lip service to reality and talk about issues and problems more than we talk and prefer solutions. And this makes us to miss one word, kindness. Religion should be kindness, as simple as that. Religion should be kindness. It should be about kind to one another. It should be being another brothers and sisters keeper, not being the person, the enemy to the brother or sister. It should be about getting worried that if I see my neighbor not having food, 
I should be able to work harder and engage with the neighbors so that we can work together to produce food to share. It should be about selflessness. It should be about collectivism because the biggest thing we can be able to do is to be useful to the society. And that is what we should all espouse. And that's kindness. That's selflessness. That's what the entire religious fraternity should focus on. Am I saying that they don't focus on? Some do. But let's put it in perspective. When you look at any aspect of development in the African continent, whether it is our education, it's Western benchmark. Let's not talk as if it's only religion that is Western benchmark. The problem with the continent today is that as a result of what we are told, we accept it without actually putting it within the context in which we are today. Institutions are people. Institutions are not buildings. It is people that actually drive change. It is not just mere words, it is action. And if you live by example, even if you don't go to church, and even if you don't pray, if you live by example, people will emulate you. If you are kind, if you are selfless, if you are nice, those are the principles that actually God actually exhibited when he was on earth. Love, kindness, being another brother's keeper. So the point I'm trying to make is that we need to go down to values. And these values need to be taught in every part of the society in which we are in whether it is in church, whether it is in school. And we start to inculcate and integrate this to become part of the mainstream transformational development in everything we do, to live by example, to talk about how people can be useful to society, to never ever use the word problem and solution at the same time, because when we start putting people that people are problem people, and especially the young people, they say they're the problem. No, we need to start inspiring people so they can see themselves as useful and make them know that when you leave, you are blessed. That's already a miracle, but you need to be useful. And usefulness means you need to do something that goes beyond your immediate surrounding. So the point is this, the systems we do have, whether they're religious institutions, or their academic institutions, we must focus to make sure that kindness become the central pillar that everybody needs to embrace. Because there are other people who pray and they don't pray. They have their other gods that they pray to. It's not just churches. They don't even go to church. They've never been to church. I saw my grandmother who used to pray. She never went to church, but she was kind. She was selfless. She fed an entire village. That's what we need today. So the, the conclusion on this particular point from my own side is that if we do not embrace selflessness and make it the central pillar of our actions, not only talking, but acting to address the challenges we face. Because you cannot tell a hungry child that you gave him or her food yesterday and she or she is going to listen to you. You can't pray on, on a hungry stomach. You can't tell a child to pray on a hungry stomach when you could have actually helped that child to learn a skill to then be able to do something that can put money in her pockets or his pockets and food on the table. That child will even believe you more that actually you are actually helping him or her to grow. But when you only tell that child to pray without giving an opportunity, that child. Doctor, 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 away from that, uh, I just want you to briefly uh, comment on this. Uh, you are observing uh, what's happening in Africa as well as other parts of the world. Many persons uh, think that uh, in 2022, we should still um, blame the colonial masters for where we are today. I, th I think that point I touched a little bit, but let me just focus on it so that at least I can provide a precise answer. Mm. I said that when you look at the continent today, we talk about problems and we transfer the responsibility to others. That's something that we have never really admitted. We are very good in transferring our responsibility to others so that at least we can stay back and talk and blame. It's not only Africa that was colonized. Asian countries were colonized. Latin American countries were colonized. European countries were colonized. Why are they not at the same position in which we are in today? We have a problem in that we, we focus more on history and forget the future. We focus more on looking at what is internal in us to leverage it to be able to turn challenges into opportunities. We use the energy in blaming others. It therefore means our problem is that we are limited in our ability to recognize what we have that we can offer. And then we use that energy in complaining. So what we need to do is to ask one question. What am I useful for? And the usefulness is to devise solutions to the challenges in which we face. Then the next thing should be, we get at tomorrow, wherever we are and whatever thing we are doing, and say, how can I help that child in the village? 
to be able to put food on the table. It's not about money. It's about inspiring people. It's about making people to become passionate. And just by inspiring a human being, that human being can become unstoppable. And so our problem has been that we are excited when we complain and blame others rather than excited when we devise solutions. And the last part on that is that our society has been constructed in a way that when when solutions are devised by some people, especially the young people, I see them devising a lot of solutions, they are not appreciated and inspired to do more. We instead glorify material and leave the aspects in which we are supposed to focus on, which is inspiring those who are preferring solutions and developing solutions to the challenges, but glorify material. And that's why somebody will steal and be applauded in the community or in the society, because they say, you get plenty of money now, you don't bring plenty of money, at least it is right big car. That mentality sucks, and it is what is retrograding us. So we must now focus in appreciating progress, appreciating solutions, and at the same time, inspiring people so that they can self-believe. So the problem we have is that we lack self-belief and we need to start believing by believing that we can do what we can do using what we have, not what we don't have, and start being part of the process, not only waiting to embrace the product. We must be part of the process. And part of the process needs effort. I'll go back to this. It needs effort. Sometimes we see effort as punishment. Effort is not punishment. If you do not apply effort, how do you expect an output? But we sit, we complain because we want someone else to apply the effort. The world doesn't function that way. And we will continue to mark time if we do not change this mentality okay. that we currently have. Good evening. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I don't uh, think the church is the problem and underdevelopment uh, in Africa. It is the government and the colonial master. When we plain uh, that word of uh, Brazilis, okay? Are you okay? You want to talk Brazilis to Cameroon, PMC, Tobacco Company? These are the things that are bringing underdevelopment in Africa. I'm Reverend D. Isaac, writing from uh, Limbe. Okay, uh, good evening to you, uh, Reverend. Mr. Liu, the black race is suffering though uh, they pray more because uh, they are lazy. All leaders are selfish and the political leaders are puppets uh, to colonial masters. Barnabas is writing from uh, Yaoundé. The African problem is centered on political identity, group identity. We focus more on a group rather than on building individuals to assume their full potentials. Individualism be becomes on self-development, where one will enhance uh, himself first before participating as a member of a group. The great discoveries in the world were done by individuals, not groups. This also begs uh, governments uh, to ensure that individual sovereignty is respected and freedom to explore the world is given. Also, social amenities should be at the individual's disposal. We believe so much on groups and the government. Okay. Um, Mr. Liu, the discovery of intelligent aliens would be mind-blowing in many respects, but it could present a special dilemma, a uh, dilemma for the world's religions, theologians, uh, pondering interstellar travel concepts uh, set Saturday. Uh, Christians in particular might take the news hardest because the Christian's belief system does not easily allow for other intelligent uh, beings in the universe. The question the early religion will have to answer is, did Jesus die for the inhabitants of some of the trillions of planets in the billions of galaxies out there? Let this sink into the head of Africans because the West is already looking towards that direction. Okay. Um, hello, Mr. Leo. Good evening to all of you guys watching you live from Abu Dhabi. I love your program. The cause of all this search of, of for miracles is poverty and nothing else. If our people have better health care, education, and other social amenities, all these churches will be empty. I, always, I was always sick, and I was taken to the government hospital. Everything was free right to the telephone. You can call from morning till evening, food, television, and higher speed internet, just to name the few. If we have like this in Africa, no one will seek for miracles in any church we need to develop. Dan Lanka Mutala uh, writing there. Mr. Liu, good evening. And to all of you in the house, please, a panelist way saying schools and roads are supposed to follow church. I just want to ask, has church become a political body or government body? The development of a country for me solely depends on the state. Church is there to educate people. 
of God's uh, word and teaching the people good morals. We can only blame the church for failing to do this. When the people are educated of righteousness, we won't beg for development. But we should know a man won't change without the will to change, no matter what we do. Silas is writing from Bonaberry. So many me messages, and many of them are very, very long. So you discourage me to even read them. So many of them are too long. Now, uh, Mr. Tazi, how do we get the word of God work for Africa? That is, take Africa uh, miraculously through, um, through its uh, path to development. We have to, we have to kill our selfish okay. habit, mm -hmm. self-centeredness. Then we have to learn to work as a team. Mm -hmm. That's the strength of the West, teamwork. Uh, we are too individualistic, individualistic in Africa. I want to be rich alone. I want to own everything alone. Africans don't believe in working and joint projects a lot. And this is where, after praying, if you cultivate this habit of developing joint projects, we, we realize, uh, we realize a, a, a giant step forward. Mm -hmm. So we should be able to also uh, love one another. There's a lot of hate among Africans. I have not been able to put a finger on what, what causes that, but we hate ourselves very much. Africans, that's why if you look around, if you look at the world, when people act in, in, in crisis zones, mm -hmm. you're going to ask whether, even though they will say it's a war situation, but you're going to ask whether people's consciences are still alive or there's someone has taken their consciences out of them. So that degree of hatred, that degree of inhuman way to act, is something that we have to, because until I know that you are valuable to me and to the society, Mr. Mm -hmm. Leo, I will not find a need to work with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I feel that you are useless to me and to this community, okay, that you cannot benefit anything around me, then I will not find a need for you. So we have to cultivate this habit of, as a doctor from Kenya said, it starts, all what the church says, it starts from love. Mm -hmm. We have to cultivate the habit of love, true love and sincere, true and sincere love, we have to be able to correlate this to hard work. We have to put our efforts together and work as a team. He has, the talk from Kenya has mentioned it severally about collectivity. We are too individualistic in the way we think. So my opinion is that if we have to move forward, we should pray, I agree. We should be able to learn to love one another. We should be able to learn to work as a team and learn to plan. I feel that most of, uh, when I first read the topic, the other topic that I mentioned about Africans being unpatriotic. unpatriotic yeah. My idea was that not all Africans are unpatriotic, but the few that are patriotic are easily neutralized by the selfish ones that have, that have a hidden agenda. So mm -hmm. we have to learn to be patriotic. We have to learn to love Africa. To do things that, if you love Africa, you do things that will benefit Africa. Things that will benefit the children that you are giving birth to and the next generation. And this is where we, there's a serious disconnection when it comes to Africans. A European sits down and plans will happen in their city in the next 200 years. I mean, the planning is happening tomorrow. They are planning what will happen in 200 years. If they are planting trees, they are planting it. If they are construction, they say in the next 200, this road will have this. We cannot put road here because in the next 200 years, 200 years, this is where the road will be. They are planning 200 years like they are planning tomorrow. In 200 years, none of them will be alive. But that is what they are doing as a team. This is what we should, we should cultivate. Yeah, but uh, if, we, we, if we blame them, why don't we learn from what they are doing? You are saying this is what they are doing. What stops us from implementing this? I love that question. What stops us is our leaders. Okay. And these leaders have been carefully kept there by them. That's what I'm saying. They, 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 they carefully make sure that if doctor seated here is has to take care of this media house, and doctor is doing things in this media house that will benefit the, the common man in in this environment, they carefully take doctor out and put somebody who will not do things that will benefit, will benefit them. This is where the problem is in leadership in Africa. Oh, if you look at the history of Africa, everybody, most of the African leaders who have stepped up to work, to, to come out with their own ideas of making the lives of their citizens better have been killed by the West. I don't need to start mentioning them. So they make sure that those that they keep there are those that are there working for them and not working for the common African. Okay. And my approach to this, what is the way out of this? 
next 50, 60 years, we have been in it. So what, how can we come out of it? We have to be collective. African leaders have to work as a team. We have to, because they will not kill all of us at the same time if we agree on a single thing. And what they have done is that they have bought some people like uh, my, my brother here, they make sure in this panel they buy him. He's now sitting among us as a spy. So when we start planning how we are going to come out of their clause, he's the one reporting to them, telling them that this is the tragedy, so they can get a, a, a counter. And that is where the Africans have a problem. Because we sit down, we plan that this is uh, for 60, 50, 60 years. We have been crying about, complaining about colonization and everything. We should be looking, what, how do we come out of it? How do we come out of it? We should be thinking about that. And the only, my opinion is that who can come out of it, that we, leaders sit down in a group, as a group, and they decide on the way forward, as a group. Not as individual. Okay. It has been proven that as individual will easily pick you out. Okay, no, so that's my opinion. Yes, um, how do we make the word of God work? Miracles, real miracles where it turns Africa into a paradise. Yes, uh, and you, I'm happy you've come back to the issue of miracles. And there was somebody who wrote and said, miracle is something you cannot, cannot understand. But that is still the Bible definition of miracles. And I wanted to talk about the real life miracle. Anything that marvels you is a miracle. Anything that is strange to you is a miracle. Anything that somebody fabricates like this airplane, and if, I mean it flies the sky, you look at it and say, how did this happen? It's a miracle. And we have to accept that. When we continue to think that miracle is only as the way in the Bible, then we keep on building churches and praying for the miracles to happen. Let us accept that we ourselves are temples of miracles and we can make them happen. So the second thing I would like to talk about in a practical way, I would like to, uh, uh, we, we have something around uh, here in, uh, in Bonamusadi, where we call it Committee de Bay. Committee de Bay is, uh, they call it the Watch Committee uh, of, of the Douala Five Council. The Watch Committee is, uh, this, this, some Christian churches have come together, the Catholic, the Baptist, and the Protestant. They have come together, and they have formed a committee. And this committee is supposed to work with the council. And the committee, the rule of the committee is to open the eyes of the council. When there is something wrong that is supposed to be done, this committee goes to the mayor and says that we have seen this thing. If it's a pothole, mayor, there's this thing there, we are supposed to fix it. If it is a hospital, it's not working. The committee goes to the mayor, and if you, whoever in charge, and tells him that thing is not working. And it, has, it is beginning to work perfectly for a city like Bonamusadi. I think that, like our brother here said, there's need for synergy. We need to synergize our effort. Thirdly, these churches that we are talking about, that we are even condemning, most of us go to these churches. And I think that we have to serve as assets for these lovely ideas for the development of Africa rather than liabilities. Churches are supposed to have civil society in the churches who come together and let the leaders of the church say that this church is, I mean, there is something the church has to do in the society. It is very important. Church is supposed to run philanthropies. It is supposed to be that the churches should be able to bring for development to in, 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 in the community. You are rebellion in church? No rebellion. It is not an issue of rebellion because who is the church? The church is you and me. The church is you and me. It means that the decision that we take in church should be the decision that is the human friendly. That is the decision that is supposed to take up humanity. It's not a decision that is supposed to, I mean, go against humanity. And when you come together as civil society in church, civil society means that what? You are people of peace, you are Republican. That you come and give advice. <laughs> that this thing that is supposed to happen is, is, is supposed to be human friendly. Yeah, and and yeah, the only bad thing is that, uh, pardon? Uh, you are Republican in the church. Of course, of course you are. You are. See, churches are prospering in Europe and America because these churches are philanthropists. They are doing a lot of philanthropic works. These churches in Europe, sometimes they are even uh, registered as, uh, 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 as philanthropists, not even as Christian organization. So I think that the churches have their own role to play. There are churches in, uh, in Europe whose role is just to give aid, maybe to orphanages, to give. They are specialized, meaning that they have a duty to the community, they have a duty to humanity. And therefore, when you bring this aspect of people coming together to tell the church that you are also supposed to assist in this, you are not rebelling in church. You are only living the Christ way. Because Christ came for humanity. Christ came that all may be well. Not the idea of, uh, I mean, uh, if, if you don't give, uh, sell all and give to church or give to God, you will not go to heaven. I don't think that that's the, the sole idea of the church. The idea of the church that we should be together, we should form a Christian community. And what is a Christian community? 
Christian, there is what we call the small Christian communities in the churches, whereby the small Christian community take care of the people in the quarters. Those people are supposed to come and say, tell the church, in this quarter we have this problem, this Christian have this problem in this quarter. And if the churches are right-minded, they are supposed to transform the, the, the religions of the people to the hierarchies. I think this is the rule of the church. And, 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 and secondly, we have been talking about people actually not playing their role. And our brother said it so the word that we are our own enemies. Look, for example, we want you to carve something like the United States of Africa. What happened? The moment a person like Gaddafi started doing something, the Bank of Africa, you know, they came in for him. And I usually say that for Africa to emerge and actually meet up with Europe, the leaders have to be pelicans. And I usually use that image of a pelican to say that that pelican is the bird that wounds itself to feed his young. It means that what? A leader should be there to serve because the apostles they serve and that a leader you don't go there to make yourself and to eternalize yourself in a presidential palace because uh there is life after the palaces or even there's life after death and to say that you have to be ready to sacrifice to your people because i know that once you start doing something good they will come for you in rwanda churches were closed closed down i mean they did uh, kakame did that and said those churches that are only there to sing praises and they are not doing anything for the good of the people should be shut down. I think that this should be the idea that the leaders and we inclusive, because when we say leaders, we are only thinking about the, the president. We have a responsibility to play. Do, I mean, uh, politicians, I mean, I don't mean politicians who jump from one place to the other. Politicians who are stable, they should stabilize yourself and send forth. I was saying it in the program here yesterday at the House of Commons, and I said, one of the things that will make us emerge is when politicians see problems and they go for the problems and they criticize the government for the problem. Most politicians have taken up power, opposition have taken up powers because of the problems of the country. When they see a problem, they hang on it. And that is the, way, the best way to topple a government. Because when they hang on the problem, problem of corruption, problem of bad roads, problem of these high prices and whatsoever, they easily win the heart of the masses. And once you start talking about what touches a woman in the house, that prices are high in the market, you win the heart of that woman in the house. And that is how opposition parties actually emerge to take okay. over power. Good evening, uh, my brothers in the studio, especially my brother, Dr. Michael. This is Derek uh, from Boya. Love the way you analyze things. Kudos to you. And the kangaroo man, good evening to you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. What brings on the development in Africa is hatred. In Cameroon, Cameroonians buy goods from Chinese to sell and make a living, and those goods, these goods are seized and burnt by other Cameroonians in the name of authorities. The Chinese keep making their gains while Cameroonians keep making a great loss, and the authorities get their taxes while the economic situation of Cameroon worsens. Uh, Boni is writing from Boya. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu, and the panelists are uh, Sam's uh, 100 and 28 uh, to says uh, your work will provide for your needs we the Africans don't want to think of what to do we are deceived uh, uh, with uh, the gospel of prosperity we feel we can succeed with prayers alone our people now believe that their sick ones will get well only by praying for them if we want to come out of this mess we must sit up and do something Ndomi is writing from uh, Douala Good evening, Mr. Liu and everyone in the panel. Our religion is, uh, it is uh, written. The Bible is a spiritual book. You can find the Bible in uh, Free Misery Lodge. In the Bible, most of the stories happen in Africa. It is written, Jesus uh, Christ lived in Egypt uh, from 12 to 30. Yes, uh, who taught Jesus? He was definitely taught in Egypt. Africans have refused to come together and are looking for Fain excuses to hide behind civilization implode, uh, they don't explode. Uh, same with uh, the Moorish civilizations, uh, we blacks divided amongst ourselves. That's why the white man could enter uh, records of the past states, uh, this fighting and killing each other. Greed and white man knows we are greedy and uses it yeah. to his advantage. Tribal wars was the main cause of slavery and wars till today. Okay? Uh, people die because of gizzards in the village. In our tradition, we still see the evil. The white man just makes sure we never stop fighting amongst each other. Ginny Caleb is writing from Kribi. 
Greed has always been a part of man. The economy in most prosperous uh, countries is built by private corporations and they are owned by individuals. Collectivity is not the answer. The failure of communism and socialism in most countries shows what collectivity can do. The West was not built by groups but individu individuals with government creating an, an enabling environment. Nicolas Maduro's uh, regime in Venezuela suffers thanks to socialism and believing in government and uh, groups, okay, we took over from Hugo Chavez. Um, good evening, sir. All the members of the panel, uh, prayers without work is dead. James 2, 17. We may pray from January to December, but when these prayers are not transformed into practical efforts, most of not all the prayers burned, uh, fall into the gullible dragnets of uh, Charlatans in the name of pastors and churches are governments too have intentionally held everything captive refusing to provide the enabling environment for the purpose of God to be fulfilled through the church. The government wants everyone to see every progress to be coming from her, thus imposing very high taxes on every venture uh, that the church introduces for the welfare of the people. Pastor to Moses Kum writing from Bonaberry in Douala, man of God. No. <laughs> Kangaroo man. Kangaroo man, man of God. <laughs> Kangaroo man, yes. Oh, but, yes. But you're a man of God now. Very serious. Yes. What What do you think uh, the church needs to do more to get us towards the right path? Because whether we like it or not, most of those in leadership positions, be it at the municipal, legislative, executive, are all members of the church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what the church can do if they want things to change mm. is first for those who choose leaders in the church not to choose them based on different principles apart from the bible principles um we talk about leaders of the church as i said because they are far more involved in business before god instead of god before business that's where we find ourselves so if we want to go for them it means that the church has to rethink they put god first and the business second. I've told people several times, women of God, that if a church is opening a school, a church is opening a hospital, it's not because the church wants to develop that area. No. It's because the church wants to make money out of the school or out of those hospitals. For evangelism. Now, I am coming, Mr. Leo. For further they will give you. The they will give you those anecdotes that is for evangelism. Yes. Mr. Leo, this is a fact I'm telling you. Because I'm coincidental, I'm talking as an investigating journalist. Several times, I always have an iota of their meetings evaluating, at the end of every year, evaluating their income. Now, in most of the meetings, a church that wants to take evangelism first, Mr. Leo, will tell them, even though this health center here is not yielding us anything, but for the father is happy people here, we can take money from maybe a health center in Bona Musa, also, that's already making excess board in also, and plow and keeps it maintaining. The moment the church realizes that this particular structure here is not yielding money, they come to the Christians, if the Christians cannot sustain it, you hear that it's been closed down because they have other areas where they concentrate. Mr. Leo, that's the more reason why churches now, in the course of their business operations, are closing down from other areas and moving to other areas that are more lucrative. Mr. Leo, it is not for evangelism, it is for business purposes. Hear me well, people of God. This one is not grammar. So, what about abuse? I have the impression that uh, Dr. Uh, Dimancho how, how did do you, not understand how what I'm saying. Do you construct this, now, this, this is what I'm coming, Mr. Leo. Mm -hmm. A church operating these structures is supposed to be different from the way a business person operates. Mm -hmm. Which means you can operate in a way that you break even, not necessarily on profit lines. In that case, you will be operating it for a purpose. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you have already existing structures that have been yielding millions upon billions annually elsewhere. It means that you can still open some other ones and allow the bigger ones to feed these ones for the purpose of evangelism. In the church circumstance, it does not function like that. Even the churches that he knows, I don't want to be calling names here, I want to take churches in general. Now, Mr. Leo, the main issue here is this. If these churches say we want to concentrate in evangelism first, business second, Mr. Leo, things will turn overnight in the, as far as the face of the church is concerned. Secondly, if we are talking about the church, the bitter truth is that the church must enter an aspect of economic empowerment. Of recent, I took a guy who discovered who had a kind of technology on Caterpillar. Now, uh, the, the, the guy, I took the guy to my village in Gunoko. 
My, but my phone in the village of Gunokwe tried to put some finance into the guy's deal. We went to Gunokwe, this caterpillar, locally made the guys in Duala here. Now, later on, the guy also, we gave some particular steps, and the guy went to Yaoundé. Now, to tell you that the problem is very complex, because since the guy went to Yaoundé and came back, all what was happened, they only kept it in the hotel two days. When it was kept back, they gave 50,000 francs, and then the chapter closed. They said, no, we'll see what to do. Now, look at the kind of leaders we have. I'm talking about the leaders in church are a duplicate of what is happening with the leaders in the country. That is why I said, Mr. Leo, we can blow grammar from now to tomorrow. The end point is that if you have leaders of a nation that are innovative, like just to talk about even like Paul Kagame, you understand? The policies we put in place has an effect on the policies that the church formulates. That one is a fact. If you have a kangaroo leadership in Yaoundé, the church will operate in a lackadaisical manner. Any prophet will get it overnight and blow grammar. And we had one even in Bamenda some time ago that women sold the widows. So brought their cars, their husband's cars, properties to give because they were looking for particular miracles, as we say. Before the guy ran sometime and went to Kuwa from Cuba to Nigeria. Those who are hearing me, they understand the story I'm talking better. I will tell you because I have, I work with the men of God. It's not blackmail. I can tell you that I know more than 50% of the men of God whom I work with between Yaoundé, Douala, and I do their jobs in terms of communication and strategies. So, but I'll tell you that so, when I so, come in to tell them that, please, I think that these things should have been like that. No, excuse me, I'm coming. <laughs> but when I tell them, is that you had Dr. Dimancho takes another dimension <laughs> because he wants to cover where he's coming from. <laughs> but I tell you, they know what I'm talking about. When it comes to communication, I tell them, man of God, I feel that like this one should be like this. And most of my contact with them has been terminated because when I start being, being a little bit critical as a professional in the field, they tell me, no, this one it is Christ that has instructed them to. Now, I don't know that as a professional, you will tell me to put up a communication that does not resemble me as a professional because Christ had instructed you in that manner. I begin to doubt. So these are things we say that, Mr. Lord, if we call a spade a spade, the end result of all the jargons we're talking here, in quotes, is the fact that the moment we begin to have good leadership at the level of the helm of the country, anything quack, anything that has to do with education you say, you will be restructured say, 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 and brought back say, to the say, churches who will formulate say, to the we Christians. Say, we say uh, God first. But seemingly, we are going back to leadership of the country. Do we really know the power of God? Do the church actually understand the power it possesses to change things? Because seemingly, the church here and the prayers now depend on leadership. Should the world not model the church? I think, I, I see, like the Americans have their slogan, mm. uh, in, in God, God we, we trust. trust. Mm. But look at where America is today. Uh, so it's, it's a direct contrast of what we have around here. And I, I understand their concept. The concept of God in God we trust is that they don't want to trust God as those people who go and sit in the temples to pray or to uh, inca make incantations or whatsoever. They want to trust God that if they want to go to the moon, they are trusting on God to reach there. But it is their personal effort that they are using. Usually we say that as I said here, and I said, I said, trust the doctor that you have in front of you. And when you pray, pray for the doctor that you should do his work well. And somebody said, no, the doctor doesn't heal. It is God who heals. Yes, it is God who heals. But God uses that doctor to heal. And that is what is important. And that's what we are saying that if you are given a gift, and we have, all of us, we have gifts. Like Mr. Faye is a great communicator. If he has a gift, if he doesn't use that gift well, and then he goes and sits in church to pray God, to give him, I mean, uh, uh, that powerful gift to, uh, to speak so that, or to communicate so that people will, and he doesn't do research, that gift will be not. We need to improve on that gift, and that's why the world is constantly changing. We have said the world is changing today because of the zeal of the youth. The youth are becoming so zealous and I mean, you know, the ambitions of the youth is changing the world. That is why you change from uh, maybe uh, a, a messenger. I uh, mean, you go to Facebook, you come to WhatsApp, WhatsApp, you come to... It is changing, and this is not all. We do not sit to say that, God, we want the next step of technology on how to communicate. No, people are working on it. We have little children in Japan and Korea who are fabricating these watches. 
It is because they have been told to do that. It's not because they were brought to church as we have our first children here. We go to church and then we offer them, we baptize them. And then we think that we have already finished everything on those children. And then the pastor and the priest laid their hands on it and said, this child will be this tomorrow. It is a lie. If you do not want for this child to be what that child has to be tomorrow, it is a lie. I'm not blaspheming. We have to educate these children. They need education. They need to know. You need to identify their talent. And once you identify your talent, you bring it towards that talent. You let that child, you motivate that child to follow the, the talent. And that talent, when that child does that thing beautifully well, I come and stand and look at the thing. If it is a new kind of aeroplane that the child has invented, I will sit there and say, what a miracle. Because a miracle is something that your mind does not understand. So for that child, it is something simple because the child understands the science in, the, on the, in it. But you, an onlooker, it is a miracle. So I think that the miracles should not only be things that we, we pray and then they come from El Dorado. They come from an imaginary world. And then it's come, you, you, you have a miracle that, uh, that uh, so a pastor tells you that you have 500,000 or five, 5 million tomorrow. You do not even have a bank account. You do not even work. <laughs> and then you, the whole night you are dreaming. You want the, the next day to come so fast. Because my pastor said that tomorrow or next week you are going to have 5 million francs. Is this not a kind of, uh, 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 what, what do I call it? Foolishness or backwardness of the highest order. <laughs> so what I'm saying that we should put our talents to work. Because the issue with uh, praying for miracle is that you pray and then you, 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 you have an imagination that uh, some angel, some kind of angel will come from some space. And then I was here listening to a testimony already and one pastor said, I prayed. I prayed, and then the next day when I went to church, I saw a, a, an envelope of money. And when I opened it, it was 20 million francs. That is a lie. That is to motivate and further enslave the Christians that you have. It is a lie. The pastor did not put that money in church. It was carefully mounted, and the theater and the drama was well crafted. It is a lie. We have to work in Africa. And we have to show proof of the fact that we are people who are born to work. We are even talking about us. I mean... The high, they are, they are, they are Cameroonians or Africans who are working at NASA. Ca Cameroonians are professors in one, some of the highest universities in the US and Europe. And then you are telling me that we are backwards. We are backwards in what? It is just because we have refused to be pelicans. We don't want to be those people that will wound ourselves to feed our young. Once we have that kind of selfish African attitude that you do not want your brother to know what you have. And do you know why our villages are backwards? Because of our politicians. Our politicians wonder when they go back to the village, all the old villagers come and fall on their feet and then they begin to throw. We have seen most of them throw 1,000, 2,000 on them. Because they want to be their only name of reference in their villages. That is why our villages have remained in cliffs. And anytime a youth is coming up with a project or coming up to a limelight, the politician pushes him down because he doesn't want two politicians or two big names to be called in that particular village. And that is why we have with our people who go out of the country. They want to be the, the conquistador that we have in the world. That when they come to Africa, they begin to teach some lessons that are illusory. That, I mean, lessons that you cannot even touch. And then they make you believe that, okay, they are the only one who have the magic solution. We have the magic solution here in Africa. Okay, I want to take this one from uh, Tiku Felix. It's quite long. So, so many messages, and they are too, too long. Um, I would like uh, Dr. Richard now to follow closely what I'll read here. He will react to it. I'm sure you two, you are in next, um, Tangaruman or whosoever. Good evening, Mr. Liu, and good evening to the entire panel. Mr. Liu, the truth is human beings have that attitude. Stop sending the message at Tiku, Tiku uh, Felix. When you send, it, it, it disrupts uh, my capacity to read, please. Mr. Leo, the truth is uh, human beings have the attitude of appreciating when they receive but condemn when they don't get what they want to, the extent that they even forget all you had done. Africa is where it is today thanks to prayers. The white man would have wiped off Africa, if not of prayers, and they are playing a major role, putting policies in place that hinders development in Africa. Reason why Africa is not represented as a veto power. They decide uh, call Africa. You meant uh, they decide for Africa. Prayer has its place. God has his uh, responsibility, and man too has his responsibility. In prayers, we dialogue with God get instructions and divine directions from him and what we will become. 
will be based on our obedience and efforts to realizing what we received in prayers. Africans believe things just happen without any application of efforts. Before the white man came, there was a great sense of unity, but I assure you, Mr. Liu, the witchcraft level was high as well. We have villages with all youth in the cities just because of witchcraft. Thanks to prayers, those villages are filled with youth today. The major problem why Africans pray much yet remain underdeveloped is because of laziness, foolishness, and misinterpretation of the scriptures. Africans are so lazy to the extent that one man believes for them and tells them what God says and they just follow. Another major reason is the influx of so many manipulators in the name of men of God, who I call God of men. These are thieves who use uh, the name of God to steal from people. They have so studied they understand the people such that uh, they tell them what they want uh, to hear instead of telling them what they need to hear. Another big issue is the fact that uh, the ones who pray the most are the principal enemies to themselves. A house divided by itself can never develop. That is Africa for you. Please, Mr. Liu, if the kangaroo man has had an issue with church or church leaders, he should not transfer his aggression <laughs> to the topic. <laughs> there is an extent of development that the church can bring, and the church has its policies and must not work based on what you feel or think. Tiku Felix from Boya. Uh, Dr. Richard, you certainly listen to, to him. He says, uh, without prayers, Africa would have been wiped out uh, by the colonialists. What is the interest of the colonialists to wipe out Africa and not the other continents? I think um, that's one of the most ridiculous statements I've ever heard in my entire life. Um, <laughs> that um, without uh, prayers, Africa could have been wiped out. I think God is no respecter of persons. You reap what you sow, and if you don't plant, you will not harvest. You plant maize, you will not harvest beans. You plant beans, you will not harvest rice. And somehow to fix it and make such a ridiculous statement like that, to me, is um, something that is uh, tongue-twisting and jaw-breaking. Uh, that's one. Two, look, I think we, we, we love sensationalization as Africans, and that's something that I don't really associate with. With uh, uh, sens sensationalism, uh, sometimes whip up emotions, uh, uh, and that's what some people like, but it, it doesn't sustain in the long run, because so what Africa needs today is socioeconomic liberation. Our founding fathers fought for self-determined role, but the missing link with what they fought for today is that Africa is not socioeconomically empowered. Nobody will listen to any message if he or she cannot put food on the table. I'll keep going back to this. Uh, unless we try to look at what we have and leverage it to ensure that we also economically empower citizens across the entire African continent, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from today, the discussion we are having today will still perpetuate. So what do we need to do? One, we must be able to leverage the institutions we have. We must pride ourselves as Africans of having some structures and institutions that other parts of the world have never ever had. If you take our local governance structures across the entire African continent, which I happen to work with some of them, they have the most structured, well-guided, streamlining approaches that can actually be leveraged to reach millions of people. We're working with the Buganda Kingdom in Uganda, and we've actually demonstrated this. That aside, let's come back to churches. We, we should not only look at the negative part of what religious institutions present, to those that look so. Let's look at it from the perspective of what they should be leveraged. And I think when you look at what um, uh, Elvis and Aloysius and also Dr. Dimocho said, I mean, they said they brought up some very excellent points and we should, and I want to build on those. I go back to the point that Africa needs socioeconomic empowerment. How can we start to leverage churches as institutions that are accessible to people in communities and use them to drive entrepreneurship in the continent? We can not only go to pray, but let's use churches as we have. We are used to in Janghees. In East Africa, here they call it Chamas. In West Africa, Cameroon, Tongtins, and Janghees. Can we make every church to become a Tongting and in Janghees so that resources can be raised? And those youth who have ideas, they can actually assess that money to do because something to build their skills and to start driving entrepreneurship in, the, in their different localities. 
We can not only wait and complain when we have structures and opportunities in place that we can leverage and that will transform the country. Second and third, almost, we have a country, if I take Cameroon, for example, which I know a thing or two about, Cameroon actually, their middle class is the informal sector. It's the only country in the entire African continent, which I cover, that have the middle class being the informal sector that contributes 50% to the GDP of the country. What does that mean? If you are to leverage the structures in which they have, they're leveraging cooperatives. Uh, one or two, three people, even when we were growing up, my mother have in Yangi group, they will contribute little money to buy our books. Why don't we build on those with ideas to be able to ensure that at least we can transform our churches to become the bigger institutions in which they become because we were bringing God's word into it, it should even function well. So let's start to look at how do we liberate churches to work for good and help empower socioeconomic transformation from an enterprising dimension. And the last part is that when we look at <coughs> issues in the continent, whether it is prayers or whether it is bad governance or whether it is leadership, we can discuss that. But you do not fight existing realities. You will not win. What you do is you, de you develop alternative models that can make existing realities obsolete. What does this mean? We must be able to look at alternative pathways that can turn challenges to opportunities. We don't need to fight what doesn't work. What I mean by fight what doesn't work, if there is poverty and we keep talking that there is poverty, just by talking about it will not change anything. We need to prefer solutions and start to work with the coalition of the willing. And the coalition of the willing, we have 60% of our population youthful. You can only operate from your position of strength, our position of strength as a continent, and our young people. Let's build on their abilities. Let's encourage them. Let's inspire them. And as a result of that, we'll start to have a grand swell of solutions that will then turbocharge transformational development. And last on this particular aspect, is that we must start to inspire one another. And that is a personal responsibility. It's not government that inspire people. You and me should inspire one another, starting from our circles. We should start to tell people that they must be able to live a purposeful life. Whether you're a journalist or a climate scientist like myself, or you are uh, a priest in church, it doesn't matter. We must be able to showcase by example that we are kind, that we are selfless, and that we should inspire people that if you don't have a skill, you will not be relevant in this 21st century. Why? because the skill is the biggest premium. It will not, it's not because you come from Com or you come from Bengui, or you come from Boom, or you come from Subways, or Littoral, or not, that matters. When you stand on that stage, it is what you can offer that makes the difference. People will tend to know where you come from later, but when you offer value, they, look, they take that value that you've offered, and to offer value, you need effort. So life is not a place of ease or celebration as we have been told. It's a place where we apply effort. It's a place of sacrifice. To build value needs effort. And without this, doing so to drive socioeconomic transformational development, we will never ever get out of this quagmire in which we are in today. Okay. Over. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Very quickly. Okay. I mean, there's something he said. The churches, he said we should start entrepreneurial practicing in the churches. Mm. That is a point that could work, if not of the greedy nature of the leadership of the church, because the church is only gathering a lot of youths. So the people have already been gathered together that you can tap into it and you empower them. But because of the greedy nature of the leadership, would they let that go? That's the question. If they could, it would have been a wonderful approach that doctor from Kenya has just proposed because one of the things, one of the most challenging issues would have been to gather people, this use together to empower them. Gather if, resources. Yes. Mm. If you already have a place where they come, you, are, you already gather them. It can be easier to empower them Better. on entrepreneurial skills, but with the leadership of so, those structures, allow this to work. If they could, it would be one, one powerful way we can pick on. Okay. Yes, yeah. I just want to say uh, in, in that po on that point that sometimes I like to talk by, by them, I mean, fiscal examples, you know, like I, I just talked about uh, the, the Catholic Church we have down here. They have a formation center where they form young people. And especially with the war in the Norway and South region, they have opened a big structure whereby they have received over 100 and something girls, only girls that they are forming. I think at the end of the year, they are forming in five, six months, and then they settle them five, six months. That's why I think that this is the practice that we have to inculcate. And all of us, as I said, we are church members, we are church goers, we are Christians. We are supposed to take part in this and open the eyes of most of these people. Sometimes pastor, pastors and priests take the, 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 the sight of, the, of, the, of Jesus. They want to stand for Jesus, and they are not Jesus. They too have their failures, and that we are the ones 
Christians to open their minds and be able to inquire, I mean, to tell them that this is what we think that can work for the society. I think that is just that. Okay, uh, Kangaroo Man. Yeah. Well, I think from uh, the other paradise, mm -hmm. they are all in track, on track because we think that the main thing is economic empowerment. Um, contrary like, to what I got a Tiku from uh, Boya, uh, who was uh, a little bit emotional, I think that each time I give an utterance here, I speak as someone who works with men of God. I keep saying this. I some speak with someone like who works. There might be things I don't want to say on air because there are some things I keep but, yeah, because you but me, it's maybe, not a matter of Maybe you have problems, problems with them also. No, 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 no. no. If I have problems, you would know. Mm. Because some of them could complain to you. You'll get the point. Mm -hmm. I have good working relationship with you because at each point in time, my issue is I make you to understand some things which if you want me to do otherwise. And most of them, even if they get to hesitant, but they get to understand that's how it moves. I think you don't work with men of God because you need to create problems. You work with men of God to showcase your professionalism if they call you for one or, or two of those things. And at the end of it, I, I understand when you are emotional, when the people, because when we started sometimes, uh, I had a program here sometime, Mr. Liu, he is still concerned the issues of men of God. And sometimes we have men of God who said the devil was using me. And later on came behind again to discuss with me. But what did you say? What did you really mean? So you see that even as I said, even after this, you see, I, I talk with most of them who come inbox, you know, you know what you're saying, you know, you know, so how, how? You know, humility is something that keeps a man moving. And sometimes if you are a Christian and you want to be emotional, you don't buy an issue because facts are clear. Once these things are wrong, we mention them here on air because we want them to be corrected so that the church becomes an area where people will be able to emulate examples. But if we come here because the church is doing bad, because we are linked to a, a, a one priest or the other, or because we benefit from the church one way or the other, then we see others are thinking that they have problems with the church. That's where we get it very wrong. And I think that all in all, this program is to build up and to raise the morals of men of God to know that they are supposed to do things. If they were doing the other way around, they should now pick up as leaders to show an example. Because in real terms, the church, the function of the state is supposed to emulate examples from men of God in real terms when it comes to leadership. But we have it, but the other way around, because everything is in a zigzag manner in the kangaroo system. That's why we think that men of God will get up from sleep and come out to do their real mm -hmm. things, which is not an aspect of having problems with them. As okay. I got Tiku saying, which is um, outrageous statements in the Good. course of uh, talking about Africa and the destruction. Good evening, Mr. Liu and everyone in the studio. Uh, you're writing that you've written to me, and I've not uh, read. There are hundreds of persons who have written. So it's actually difficult to read all of the messages, sir. In my opinion, that question is where the problem begins because it makes it sound like prayer was designed to remedy those in need. It's uh, a religious mentality. In Luke 1, 18, Jesus told the parable that every man ought to pray. Prayer is for everyone, not for those suffering. There is no relationship between most blacks who are suffering and prayer except you mean religious prayer. No, uh, the topic is comparative to other races in the world. Why is the black race suffering the most comparatively? You, that is what it's meant. When you compare the black race and the others, it does not say that the blacks are not also enjoying, but the suffering rate is more than other races. There's no relationship between most blacks who are suffering and prayer, except you mean religious prayer. Suffering is a product of mindset. Prayer was designed primarily for fellowship with God, not for suffering people to get better. I think that uh, the ideology should be corrected. First, um, most Africans are poor because of the mindset sold to them by society. Black doesn't mean poor. Prayer and poverty are not a result of either. Jerry Ngante, writing from uh, Bafia, uh, good evening to you too, uh, Jerry. This one says, um, good evening. I am Reverend Marcos Kuyet Luis, watching from Nigeria. I want to advise you should be careful of how you talk about the church because we here in Nigeria know, um, know what we are passing in Nigeria with uh, Muslims. Where those pastors that are fooling members should stop and teach the true gospel and may God deliver us in Africa. And to anybody blaming the white man should also know that uh, without the white man, we would have not known the gospel. So we should not think, forget that they brought the gospel. Dr. Richard, do you want to say that God does not answer prayers? What do you have to say to Turkey today that churches are now tourist centers? I love your ideas, but we have to also watch what we say about the church because others are also teaching lies about the church please okay we have to end at this uh, juncture 
Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Richard, for passing through this program today. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Lu. And let me just uh, one second say, um, first of all, there is nowhere that I said anything that the church was not important or this. I said, first of all, the church is us, ourselves, and we need to prefer what we need to do by applying effort. Church is not just a building. So just to correct that, at least I, 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 I never said that uh, uh, the church uh, and prayers is not important. Prayers is important, but we must apply effort to be able to ensure that at least we do what we are expected to do. It was a great show and a great panelist discussions, and I really appreciate the time and the opportunity. Good Thank you. Good to be Mr. Liu, and the great mindset. The African problem is there uh, because we, we Africans have embraced the Western culture and beliefs thus neglecting our rich African traditional system. We really need to ask ourselves these questions. Is Japan, China, just to name a few Christians inclined? So there is need for Africans to work hard to develop those aspects of uh, the society which can bring development not by opening churches here and there. Molombe Hans is writing from Aboya. Thank you for coming, Dr. Michael. Thank you so much, Mr. Liu. Uh, just to say that uh, after all the arguments, let us be uh, all understand that prayer is a push forward. Prayer can you make you an engineer. But prayer can push you to get an engineering job. Prayer can push you to work well in your engineering job. And that when you prayerize, you actualize. I want our listeners to know this. When you prayerize, you actualize. And that is what it gives it meaning. Thank you so much and good evening to everyone. Hi, Mr. Leo. Please, can you ask your panelists if before the white man came to Africa, where were there African men beating their wives? 90% of how... Um, the black man want to live today is the white man's way of living. So Africans need more time to understand and apply the new structure. I am John writing from uh, Germany. Thank you for coming, Mr. Tazi. Thank you, Mr. Lowe. It was a wonderful topic, and I hope that we've shared our ideas and we've learned a lot from each other. We encourage people to pray and worship God, but also be able to work hard, to make use of your skills, to love one another, and to work collectively so that we can move Africa forward. Thank you for inviting me. Your topic for discussion is good and perfect. Let me say we cannot pray in love and live in hate and still think we are worshiping God. Uh, these are hypocrites. The second coming of Christ is soon. Valentine is writing from Bermuda. Thank you for coming, Kangaroo Man. Thanks very much. It's my pleasure. Greetings to uh, Commando Tebek, um, my Vina, and of course the Commando also watching us from the petrol station out there at Ntarikon in Bamenda. Of course, greetings to the people of Gunoko Village. Surely we'll meet again, God's willing. We want to thank uh, the producers of this uh, program and to all of you who took time off to watch uh, the first edition of Prime R for this week. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.